Ladies and gentlemen, we just touched down in Reno, Nevada for what just might be one of the most awesome recoveries we've ever done. We're doing one of the most highly requested things that I've ever seen on the channel. Alan, you got a copy? Hey, uh, listen, we're getting ready to take off. So I need you to get over here. Uh, sorry, Dave, uh, I'm a little bit busy right now. Uh, I can't talk to you right now. Alan, I'm not really sure what that means. What could you possibly be doing that's more important than what we're doing right now? Sorry, uh, Dave, uh, remember that Conflict of Nations game? I'm sort of into it right now. Look, Alan, gotta be honest with you, I'm not really even sure what you just said, but um, we gotta go. I think what Alan's trying to say is he's playing this real-time military strategy game that I showed him called Conflict of Nations, and he's been kind of obsessed with it, but I'm not sure if he really completely knows how it works. You see, Conflict of Nations is really cool because it is a real-time strategy game that basically puts you in the 20th and early 21st century combats. It puts a player like in control of an existing nation's military, and then you have to make decisions based off of whatever strategy you want to run with to make sure that your army is victorious. One game of this could take like literally weeks to finish because everything is happening in real time and logistics are even more important or just as important than the actual combat operations themselves. So you have to figure out how to get your supplies and your tanks and your armor and your munitions, everything from one point to the other without getting you know attacked and losing your whole supply. So, but what I love about it is the maps are like genuinely authentic. This is like actual military hardware with real countries that really exist that you get to take control of and you determine their destiny based off whatever strategy you want to play. All that's left to do is click the link in my description below because if you do, you're going to get an exclusive gift, which is 13,000 gold and one month premium subscription, absolutely free. However, this offer is only good for 30 days, so you might want to go ahead and just get it done now and go fight your way to victory. Thanks to Conflict of Nations for sponsoring this video. I got to go figure out what Alan is actually doing. Alan, uh, put your helmet on, sit down and stay right where you're at. People are always saying, hey, you should do a recovery with a Chinook helicopter. Well, Chinook helicopters are hard to come by. You don't just go out and get a Chinook. You have to know somebody who has a Chinook. And today, ladies and gentlemen, we know somebody who has a Chinook. The guys at Rotac Helicopters reached out to us a while back and they wanted to work with us on a video or a recovery. And so we've been looking at different opportunities, trying to find the right place, the right time, the right people to do you know, a recovery that requires a Chinook. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you to you, all you loyal viewers of not only our channel, but also this man right here, Trent Palmer. You, uh, you heard his, well, it wasn't really a cry for help, but you saw a video where Trent went out and he's been working on this impossible recovery. Yeah. And uh, he mentioned a Blackhawk in the video and hundreds of you came like literally rolling in saying, hey, Trent needs your help, take the Blackhawk out there. And I will tell you right now, cause I gotta set this up early on. Otherwise you guys are gonna continue to ask throughout the whole video. The Blackhawk fully capable of lifting what we're gonna go lift today. However, we don't have all the paperwork in line to be able to do the lift legally with the FAA. So since we don't have all that stuff in order yet, we decided that Rotac with their Chinook, even though it's a little bit overkill for what we're gonna be lifting today. They're the perfect fit for this mission, which has been pretty much just a huge thorn in your side. Yeah. Right? Yeah, and it was something that basically, for those that don't know, the my brother's truck, or the truck my brother was driving out to a big fly-in, spontaneously exploded. It looked like a full-blown Michael Bay movie scene. Yeah. And insurance took so long to process it that we weren't able to get out there when the lake bed was dry. It's on a big playa, right, dry yeah. lake. And now, it's completely wet, hopefully frozen, because yeah. we need to be able to land the planes out there, but it's essentially not recoverable until spring, until you bring that until in. Until we come out with a Chinook. So if you guys haven't seen Trent's video, we'll link it in the description below, um, where he was out there last, kind of checking it out, setting up, showing you what's going on. The terrain that we're gonna be on is like, it's either soft and squishy in the summertime or it's wet and frozen and just, it's just very hostile. It's not friendly terrain to uh, 
to kind of what we're trying to do. Yeah. And we're dealing with a truck and a trailer, a giant trailer that burned completely to the ground. So there's debris all over the place and uh, getting a skid loader, getting anything in there is just tricky because maybe it'll make it or maybe it's going to get sunk. And to be able to recover it, there's not a lot of areas nearby, right? Yeah, no. Well, it would yeah. have been a recovery on a recovery on a recovery. <laughs> so this is, we've yeah. done that. Yeah, we've been there. <laughs> yeah. So the plan today right now is we just landed here at Reno Stead. Is that what they call it? Yep. Reno Stead. Is this your yep. home airport? Yep. This is the home of the Reno Air Races, which right. is why there's the grandstand. No, it's not a high school stadium. We, we landed and we were like, why are there bleachers? We thought we were landing on a high school uh, football field, but this is where they do the Reno Air Races. So planes fly fast and low through some pylons in here. It's pretty amazing stuff. So um, we are here. This is where Trent's got his plane. He just pulled his plane out you got a couple buddies with planes yep um so there's gonna be three uh bush planes do you guys call them bush planes yeah sure i mean i feel like bush plane isn't really it's a bush you, plane stall planes yeah i think to these most people planes. bush plane makes yeah. more sense right yeah they these got are, bush wheels on them. these are just like some of the coolest like short takeoff and landing planes you'll ever see they're super lightweight rugged they're basically he was saying razors of the sky so it's like a utv you bounce around land kind of wherever you want what's the shortest you land i mean there's a little wind at sea level sub 100 feet my comfortable like up here is like 200 feet but i got landing on the top of all these mountains like there's a whole playground like we just i'm, I'm telling you my buddies go out on razors and i'm just i land right next to them we have lunch <laughs> and then we keep going it's fun that is awesome yeah so these planes if you're not familiar with them they have the ability to land and take off in tiny little areas on very rugged terrain they're very lightweight but they have a ton of power mine's 140 horse which sounds low but mine was originally 80. 80 and your plane yeah. only weighs 900 900 pounds so a lot the power to weight ratio is definitely favorable in these planes and uh you know i'm a helicopter guy i like to be able to take off and land wherever i want go wherever i want this is in my opinion i don't say the next best thing because i don't want to hurt your feelings because i don't have a ton of time in these planes but this is about as good as it gets when it comes to an airplane being able to do what you want to do as far as exploring and checking that stuff out and you're going to see some amazing air to air shots today and some shots of these planes landing and doing their thing so you're going to get literally all the best worlds of aviation except for maybe a fighter jet which yeah we could they might be out there it's an moa and they, <laughs> oh, yeah, they're, we they're, might, they're ripping around. we might see some fighters so we got chinooks we got stole planes we got helicopters and we've got a big recovery to do so uh right now we are just rigging up the chinook with uh, the gopros and all some of the other rigging stuff and then we're going to fly out what is it about 30 miles from here yeah. uh north of here out to the lake bed where we are going to basically cut the truck into little bits and pieces and try, kind of stack it all on top of itself so that the chinook can come in pick it up haul it a few miles away right yep got a truck and trailer out there where we're gonna load it on so lots of equipment out there lots of equipment here hands should be rolling up with tacos any minute which is the real reason why we're still here um and then we're gonna be in the air headed north so i'm pumped thanks for the invitation dude stoked you're here yeah we're happy to be here what do you think alan <laughs> you pack a lot of cargo in here these bubble domes are like <laughs> those are so funky Chad is the pilot of this big, beautiful, all face that only a mother could love. All face that only a mother could love. This is your Chinook. Yep. Right? Uh, you've been flying for, with Rotac for a little while? Yep. I've been with Rotac for, this is going my third year. Okay. Been flying helicopters for 12 years. Uh -huh. What kind of work does Rotac do? Uh, Rotac primarily uh, focuses on heavy lifting. So we use, uh, we've got two 47D Chinooks and then we've got a couple of K-Maxes. Yeah. So, Basically aerial crane work, everything yeah. from firefighting to power line, you know, uh, any heavy load that needs right. lifted, we can... Would you say the bulk of your work is firefighting? Kind of yeah, just, you sure. know, just being in the western states, right. uh, firefighting takes up about half of our year, yeah. usually through the summer month, and, and then in the winter we'll kind of fill that in with power line right. or, or other, any other jobs that, that we can pick up. So there's going to be a few people watching this video who aren't real familiar with the Chinook helicopter, yeah. which, you know, not many people get an opportunity to see these things in person or flying. The main difference between this and a regular helicopter, walk us through just the basic, simple math. So, I mean, obviously we've got a, a much larger footprint here. Right. The Chinook from rotor tip to rotor tip is 100 feet long. Um, its max gross weight is 50,000 pounds. Um, the aircraft weighs less than half, so it sits at about 23,000 pounds, so we can lift more than it weighs. Wow. There's generally three cargo hooks. We'll be lifting on the center cargo hook that's good for up to uh, 26,000 pounds. Jeez. It's a lifter. Um, these are just designed to be Down. picked stuff up, <laughs> yeah. heavy. But they're fast. They're fast, yep. The single cruise at 150, 160, yep. right? Yeah. Uh, which is really fast. I mean, that, from what I've heard from the Army guys, the Chinooks will outrun the Blackhawks all day long. Um, 
did you were you in the service at all? I was not. So you went. Wow, you yep. A, a non-military oh, yeah, Chinook yeah. pilot. Probably not very many of you guys. Not not too many. So the difference, obviously, you'll see there's no tail rotor. You'll see two giant main rotors, and they spin opposite directions from each other, which basically counteracts the thrust, which means you don't need a tail rotor to keep the body from rotating. Um, the way that works is nobody's ever been able to explain it to me. It's basically black magic. There's some stuff in there that grabs other stuff, and then when when the pilot uh, hits the pedals, everything works the way it's supposed to, and it's pretty incredible. So we're gonna get some awesome shots of this thing flying today. Um, you wanna show us inside? It's, it's big, it's a school bus. It's bigger than a school bus. Two engines, two 5,000 horsepower engines on the side, and then these are 5,000 horse. Yep. Wow. And as you said, there's some magic and some transmissions. It's got five transmissions on board. It'll all mix and synchronize everything so that uh, both rotor systems are spinning at the same RPM. Can it fly on one engine? Uh, it, can, it can do a lot on one engine. Really? Yep. yep. So can, basically the way it works is the, it's not like one engine powers each blade. They all feed into kind of a common gearbox, which then spits the power out and distributes it evenly. But the fact that a monster like this can fly on one engine alone, if you lose another, that's wild. So the engine is for power, but also for redundancy. So as you walk in, kind of got a different entrance. This ramp can be used for loading troops. Uh, you can fit a Humvee in here. Yeah, they're kind of a, an assortment of different mission types. Generally, the military would line this with about 45 troop seats, so it can be used for troop transport, cargo, external loads. Um, it's a real multi-mission platform. Yeah, super versatile. This is the way a utility, uh, utility helicopter is set up. You don't see any panels or seats or anything like that. It's just the bare bones. And the reason for that is because they want to keep them as light as possible so they can pick up as much as possible. And also, it's not necessary. It's also nice to have all the panels off for inspections. If you're looking at things, these guys go through wild inspections to make sure they're compliant every day. You know, before this thing flies, after it flies, they're going through and checking all the systems because obviously safety is you know, number one. But if you look come through here, you got this giant hole which is access to your cargo hook. And when you're lifting, is that open? It can be. Okay. It can be closed or open. And if the crew want to look down and kind of, you know, the military, the crew chiefs would help hook up or disconnect loads, monitor loads. That would be their main role. So often they'd lay down and just stick their head out looking down at the load. Yeah. So 26,000 pounds is what they're capable of picking up from that. And that's not an exaggerated number. I mean, these guys will push those numbers all the time uh, when they're pushing big, heavy equipment, when they're hanging, you know, buckets full of water, fighting fires, 15, 20,000 pounds all day long. And as you can and see it just keeps going and going and going until you get up to kind of the crew area is it minimum crew two or three two pilot this is certified for two pilots as a as a civilian utility operator no crew chief required it's not required but if a lift you know we feel that they're required right. for hooking up or spotting a load yeah. um then yeah by all means they're a required crew member and they can run is military three required crew yeah. Okay, so being civilian, since this was military, it's now civilian in the restricted category. Uh, the FAA said, yes, we feel comfortable with it being two uh, pilots on board. That's the minimum crew required to operate this. So never going to see these things fly, uh, flying around single pilots. Same thing like the Black Hawk. They're two pilot helicopters. This cockpit looks similar to, you know, standard helicopter, but there's a lot of differences. Your collective goes straight up and down. What do they call it? They call it the collective? They call it the thrust. The thrust. All the controls essentially the same? They do the same exact thing. Yeah. So you could get in and you could pick it up and you'd feel it's easier to fly than a Black Hawk right. or an A-Star uh, because you don't have a tail rotor. Right. There's none of that kind of balancing squirrely pickup. You more or less can just pull straight up. The rotors are making even thrust yeah. and it'll come up nice and smooth. That's awesome. This has a APU, right, from the start? Yeah, yep. So this helicopter technically has three engines. It's got the uh, two main engines, and then it has an APU, which is the third engine, which basically is used to start the other engines. Uh, same thing like the Black Hawk has, but everything's just bigger. Blades are bigger, everything, you know, cargo hold bigger, cockpit's bigger. It's just a badass machine. I'm so excited to see this thing lift today. So a uh, huge shout out to Rotec Helicopters for uh, jumping in on this. It's cool to see a utility helicopter company like them see the value in creating content like this because they wanted to be involved and show, you know, showcase what this helicopter could do. So not very many companies forward thinking like that, which is really cool. I'm stoked that you guys uh, are part of a company that actually cares to not just do the work, but also show the world how it's done. Yeah. It's fascinating stuff, dude. Yep. They're going to stay here at the airfield for a little bit while we go out and get everything kind of situated. And then uh, we're going to give them a holler. They're going to fly in. The line's going to already be hanging from the bottom of the helicopter. So as soon as it comes in, we're just going to hook it all to that line. They're going to fly it over the staging area, probably two loads. Um, and then once that second load is done, these guys are gone to head back to California, right? Yep. 
So you won't, uh, you probably won't see these faces again other than on the GoPro in the cockpit. So again, huge shout out to Rotac. Go follow their uh, Instagram page. Check out, uh, we'll put a list of all their links and pages below so you guys can check them out because they do some really cool stuff and they have really cool helicopters. Whoa. I didn't expect to see uh, so much snow here in Reno and cold. I can expect cold, but not so much the snow. Not bad. Well, the ground's now like frozen. You could have just driven a truck out here to grab it. All right, so we're here at the lake bed. We just stopped the truck and dropped all the guys off. Now we're over here at the uh, trucks and equipment that are as close as they can get without sinking. That lake bed is nasty right now. This whole area you can tell is just swampy. Could have just driven a truck out here. But the plan here, is to grab the rigging, the tools that we need to be able to cut the truck up and put it in a big bundle and then get the straps on it so the Chinook can come in and haul it away. So that's what we're gonna do right now is grab all that stuff. So the Chinook is gonna fly in and it's about maybe mile, two mile flight from the lake bed and it's gonna drop the trucks, hopefully right in the bed of the end dump and uh, the roll off there. Uh, if for some reason the wind's bad or it's unstable, then we'll just drop them here on the road, come over with the mini excavator and load it all up. But hopefully we're able to get it packaged well enough that the Chinook can come over here and just whoop, drop it right in. So, and I want to be running so we can get up in the air and hurry and follow the load over in the A-Star, um, which huge shout out to uh, Keaton, AKA the muscle, uh, for letting us take his helicopter. I'm in between helicopters right now with the Black Hawk is in maintenance. And uh, I got a surprise for you guys. I bought a new helicopter, actually two. And uh, I will be revealing them here very soon. But since I sold my B0105 to Roman Atwood, I don't have a small helicopter at the moment. Total first world problems, but Keaton stepped up big time with his A-Star and said, take it, use it. And this is a great helicopter. He just got done doing some work on it. Looks really nice. You like the A-Star? I'm scared of helicopters. We took we took off just now and Trent and uh, Ryan, and they're both fixed wing pilots. They're both like, wait, what, what's going on? <laughs> it's just wrong. It's right? just scary. There's, there's way too many moving parts that are all fatigue items and yeah. they're all critical. True. That is true. But very rarely do they fail. If you're on top of it and you these things are maintained, I mean, they're simple when you when you get to know them. Yeah, they're simple hearted. And they're very safe when it comes to emergency procedures. The fact that you can get rid of all forward and vertical airspeed yeah. in a lot of rotation, pretty nice. But still, there's a lot going on. A lot to wrap your head around. Yeah, auto rotating. That's the one time I'd rather be in a helicopter than a plane. If anybody's in the market for a heavy duty inverter from Trip Light, uh, good sale going on them. Some would say it's a hot sale. <laughs> this is a hot item. First.
Oh, it's definitely not traction. Is that your, what's your plan here? I'm gonna drill into the mud. I don't think it's that's... It's hot. Just a few more of those, we got it. Gotta use our rigging very wisely right now because what we've got is all we've got. Meaning the Chinook's coming out and he's not landing, not shutting down. He's grabbing the loads, dropping them, coming back, grabbing the next one. And that means all of our slings in the first load are gonna be over the trucks. And we won't have time to go grab them, bring them back, re-rig while he's sitting here waiting because just can't have him sitting around that long. So I've gotta use my straps and rigging wisely because you get one shot at it. Uh, this was a truck and trailer I was driving out to an event we call High Sierra Flying. And I'm a fixed wing pilot, but I also fly hot air balloons. So I brought out my hot air balloon and a bunch of extra tanks so I could fly everybody all weekend long. And right as I got out here, boy, it just went boom. Felt like we got rear-ended in the truck and we opened the doors and both of the walls are off the trailer. The roof is 30 feet off to the left and everything's on fire. So at that point, all we could do is just crowd control. Um, took four or five hours for a uh, fire department to come so those seven and nine something like that propane tanks all went off in a really grand fashion and here we are today cleaning up the mess what's your approach alan what was that what's your approach load as much stuff we can in the truck and on the trailer and then we just rig it up and haul it out trying to stack everything in to make it into like a bird's nest so it stays together so we don't start losing stuff as they're hauling it. sent a screw through my pants I ripped them you're still stuck on that one I ripped those ones <sighs> man and this is my second day wearing these I know it may not look like it but it is buried in the ground over there. Freaking stuck in the ground. I believe the uh, fill another bag and then get it in the truck or throw it in the bed of the truck, whatever whatever's left. Make sure it gets picked up with the second load. Run a tie down strap across this and across the back door. All right, I think we're gonna have enough rigging. By the skin of our teeth. We're gonna use every single piece we brought. Are you worried about it? Tacoing. I don't think there's that much weight on there for it to taco. Really I think it would, and if it does, just hopefully folds into itself. <laughs> Trent, you can call him. We're ready. I feel like this is like, yeah. call the doctor ready for the baby. Yeah, it is. Wizard to the rescue. Do you have a rescue wizard on your team? Also, should we talk about the beef between Hans and Alan? There's no beef. I thought there's you guys had a love-hate no relationship beef. where Alan hates you, but you love him. Guys, there's no beef. They're good buddies, all right? Give Hans a break. Your comments are really taking a toll on him. They just don't understand. They, look, you're hard to understand, man. It takes a minute. We all thought I was the hard to understand one. Joke's on you. Well, then explain to the people who I am. 
Your hands, you're the guy. You're, you're, you're the guy. But I know, but my... He's the guy. Like, the my guy. My jokes and things like that. Like, my humor. You don't, even get, you don't even know. Dude. It's good. His jokes are funny. Once you get to know him, you understand that he's he's nervous at heart, but he, he has a big heart. It's a nervous big heart that beats quickly and sometimes murmurs. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I got eyes on you now. So Dave is firing up and then uh, he'll be on frequency with us. It's go time. Just hit. Holy <laughs> that was mind. crazy. That was crazy. Like, I don't even know how I'm gonna hold this and freaking hook it. And... I, I realized that. That's why I came up to help you. Like, dude, and that was a lot. Dude. Yeah. Thank you for that. That went way better than I thought. God, that was, this worked right? great. This land, yeah, I think... It was like being in a hurricane with your friends and you're enjoying it way too much. You're also very afraid of like fiberglass and shrapnel in your eyes. But it was like it was such an adrenaline rush.
What did you say? Victory Snow Angel. How does it look like a real angel? Alan's gonna do one in the mud. Oh. Hey. <laughs> Fr best friends. Hey. We really did it, Harry. We did it. That was really cool. I'm down with that kind of stuff. We should do that more often. Everything worked out pretty straightforward. We didn't have any hiccups on this one. Dang it. <laughs> it's always fun when something goes and then you have to figure out something new, but it's also nice to have it go smoothly. This deserves some celebratory salsa and chips. Salsa and chips. Salsa like with or you? salsa? What? Salsa. That's not how he said it. Salsa and chips. He was saying it's salsa. Is there anything else we can do for you? No, man. That went smooth. That was insane. That was awesome. Yeah. How'd it look from down here? So good. Your plane flew away? It moved a little bit. Did it? I was standing under the wing and it started to slide. There's a point where it just goes like, really? Because I'm like, <laughs> my hat's gone. But that was cool. They it picked up perfectly. Yep. Flew perfectly. Got one in the trailer, one next to the trailer because the RV is a little big and bulky. But since I got the excavator over there, yep. should be fine. So. I'm going to fly over and help them with that. Okay. And yeah, we'll be we'll be dialed. Cool. Well, we got to get back to Salt Lake. So All we're right. going to get in the air. Fly safe, dude. Thanks for the opportunity, man. Yeah. See you around. Conflict of Nations is a free online PvP strategy game happening in modern global warfare. Choose your own strategy, engage in epic battles, and take over the world. You get an exclusive gift. Click on the link in my description to get 13,000 gold and one month of premium subscription for free. Offer only available for 30 days, so don't lose time. Click the link in the description, choose your country, and fight your way to victory.